the role he played in Gilbert Grape, it like ruined his career in the for, in the eyes of the Academy. Why is that? I don't like using that term of what he was in there, but that's the I, I'm quoting what my friend told me. He said, when you're trying to get an Oscar it, in the eyes of the Academy, never go full re. re, re. That's from Tropic no, Thunder, quote, man. Yeah, quoting Tropic dude. Thunder. Oh, is that that's, what he quoted? Yes. Oh, have you quoted. never seen Tropic, Tropic Thunder? I've seen Tropic Thunder. I forgot that's what it was from. But he said, yeah, never go full Riri, and that's why he hasn't won an Oscar. Don't go full Rihanna. I like that. I'm yeah. going to live my life by that. There's only one Rihanna, okay? <laughs> you, no one else comes close. <laughs> Welcome to the Movie Toast Podcast, everybody. I'm back. It's Corey here, your boy, with Adam. Hey, hey, hey. It's good to see my boy, Corey, back. Yeah, that's right. Tommy? Hi, Corey. You are definitely my boy. (laughs) And Dennis. Hey, guys. Dennis, are you on the toilet right now? (laughs) No, I'm just really high. (laughs) Uh, um, but anyway, it's a review episode. None of these are new. Maybe they're some of them are you seen before. Maybe, Maybe they are new, Corey. Them. Who knows? They said, Oh, yeah, so, so much stuff is going to streaming nowadays. Maybe they Maybe are they new. Have. That is a possible thing. Anyway, Adam, why don't you start us off with your possibly new movie? Oh, I saw a brand new movie called The Varium. This stars Jesse Eisenberg and Imogen Poots. They're a couple who want to move into a house, and they go to this very creepy realtor who's monotone. He sounds like a robot. Something's off with him. He's like, I got the perfect place for you guys. Come follow me. I'll show you. And they drive to this, like, pristine little weird housing area that reminds me of something out of, like, Edward Scissorhands or something with Tim Burton. Hmm. Every house looks the same, and they're driving, and it's weird. And they get out, and the guy creepily shows them the whole house. And as they're pulling in, it says, welcome to the only home you'll ever need, or something weird like that. A little ominous. So they're seeing the house. As they're looking at the backyard, the guy slips out. And they're like, oh, shit, he left. Well, I guess we don't got to look at this house anymore. Let's leave. So they get in the car. They drive away. No matter what turn they go, no matter which way they go, they always end up back at house number nine. This is kind of like a Black Mirror episode or Twilight Zone episode. This Like Silent Hill? Yeah. Okay. They always end back at this place, and they're like, well, fuck it. I guess we'll stay the night. A box shows up with all dried food, and they try eating the food. It doesn't have any flavor. Everything's weird. Jesse Eisenberg goes on the roof to see if he can find a way out, and everything looks the same. The clouds are all the same. The houses are all the same. It's just fucking creepy. They burn down the house thinking the firefighters will come and rescue them. They pass out as the house is on fire. They're outside across the street. They wake up covered in ashes. The house is back up. And then there's another box in the (laughs) middle of the area. They open the box up, and there's a baby in there. And it says, raise this boy, and you'll be set free. A baby? Yeah. They're like, ah, fine, I guess. And then it jumps. They uh, wake up. Okay. And then there's, like, this fucking creepy little boy. I'd say he's about, like, five or six at the time. And he's just staring at them. Their reaction... They just flip him off, and then he flips them off. He's just copying everything they do. And his voice is so Jesus. demonic and odd. And then he can copy what they say in almost their pitch of voice. And he's like, I want you to measure me. And so they go over to the door and do that little marking in the door, and it says 92 days. And that's oh. how we know what day they're at right now. Fuck. And uh, The baby grows up very fast? Yes. And he calls that out. He's like, I grow up like a dog? What's a dog? And Imogen Poots is like, I told you what a dog is. He's like, oh, woof, woof, woof. And then he runs around the fucking <laughs> kitchen, like, woofing like a dog. You can tell Jesse Eisenberg's fed up with it. The child always calls Imogen Poots mom, and she's like, I'm not your mother. And, oh, God, I want to talk more and more about it, but I don't want to spoil anything. The, that sounds It's awesome. a descent into madness. <laughs> I'd kill that baby. <laughs> oh, no, like, Jesse Eisenberg tries to. He wants to, he wants to lock <laughs> yes. it in their car. Until it starves and dies, because like if they want them, they'll come and pick them up. And oh, Imogen so puts passionate. eventually lets them out. Wow. Yeah. No, I just take the car and run the baby over. I left this out. Sorry. They're stuck there because the car runs out of gas. And they also try just running through fucking yards and jumping over fences, thinking they'll eventually escape, and they can't. Everything they try leads them back to this place. Uh, and you're not gonna spoil it for us. That well, this is awesome. all within the first 25 minutes. What? Yeah. Oh my yeah. Jesus. God. There's okay. a lot okay. more that happens. I'm I am, this I'm movie, sold. but I'm going to yeah. have to watch it now. <laughs> I, once I saw the trailer, it. I'm like, I can't fucking wait to see this movie. And then I, I was looking online. I'm like, oh, fuck, it's online. It's everywhere. I bought it for 10 bucks. It just came out the other day. 
You can rent oh, it damn. for eight bucks or you can buy it for ten bucks. I'm like, I'll oh, fucking buy it. <laughs> Cause I'm made of money Good apparently. Call. I, IMDB has this classified as a comedy horror yeah. mystery. Yeah. What, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do you think? Um, yeah, I, I'd give it that because you're always on edge, not sure what's going to happen. You're expecting stuff. It might not happen or the way you think it's going to happen. And it's funny. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it, it, it does like, and it's nice. Jesse Eisenberg isn't doing his average stick. But he does descend into madness. Kind of like The Shining when you're like stuck <laughs> in the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. It's just them and this boy that they're raising that they resent. But they're hoping, like they say, they raise the boy and then eventually he'll leave and they'll be free. And he gets to the point where he's a grown fucking man. And they didn't really age, which is the Jeez. creepiest because he's aging at such a rapid pace and they're staying the same. I'm telling you right now, I'm probably not going to see this movie. It sounds dreadful to me. In my opinion, it sounds dreadful, and I don't... It does just, sound horrible. The only <laughs> reason I'd watch this movie is because Adam left it all cliffhangery. I don't care. I don't want to <laughs> see it. I don't... Uh, I might, but I don't. I, like, I'm spilled. I, this sounds like something... I, I love that kind of shit. I, I enjoy Black Mirror and that kind of... There is no happy ending kind of stuff. It's refreshing yeah. against a lot of other shit. Not to go too far off tangent, but since every Black Mirror episode ends negatively, don't you know how it's going to end all the time? Well, not how. Yeah, it's but it's in, it's it's more about the journey of how you get there, and then it's not always who you think is going to get like the short end of the stick. So I, kind of, I kind of like the journey to that point. It's just, just like, I don't know. I mean, every Marvel movie is guess what? The good guys are probably going to win, and mm-hmm. you can say the same thing with a lot of genres of stuff. I'd say Vivarium, it's a yellow light. Rent it, don't buy it, save the two bucks. You might like it, you might not like it. Adam, I got one question about this. Yeah. So the title, Vivarium, or Vivarium, or whatever. Uh, so like Viva means like an oral examination, and the back part, Rium, is like an you know, aquarium, like a house. Does talking have something to do with the movie? Uh, well, like I said, the child has this weird demonic voice that doesn't match it. And he kind of copies how they talk. So I guess in a way. But it doesn't like, it's not like the solution to what's wrong with them or anything. Not at all. Strange title. Yeah, that's that movie. Yep. New, interesting, exciting. Tommy, what did you see? I want to talk about Wolf of Wall Street. My family and I have been on a Leonardo DiCaprio binge uh, as of late. And so Wolf of Wall Street came up. We watched that. And it's three hours entirety i would love to say i watched all three hours of the movie but i think i kind of zoned out and went and smoked my vape a little bit during the movie (laughs) but i've seen it a bunch of times it's such a good movie and the biggest thing the first thing i'm gonna say right now well it's not the first thing because i already talked about it but what i'm gonna say right now leonardo dicaprio deserved an oscar for this performance every time i watch it that's the biggest thing that just stands out amongst everything in this movie of how phenomenal it was, but his acting, he deserved the Oscar. They gave it to him for the Revenant. I think it's because he got snubbed for this. I don't think he deserved it for the Revenant. He goes through such a a crazy arc on his character, like how he starts off and then what he ends up. It's just, it, it goes extremes high. It's, it's fun to watch that that change yeah. in character yep yeah and like the the scene where he's uh he tries to open the door to his lambo and his foot gets caught uh that was a an ad lib like his his foot wasn't supposed to get caught it kind of just happened and he ended up messing up his back during that scene huh. and he like you know how he act it's like who, who can do that i i know i know maybe a handful of, of actors that have that kind of physicality while they're acting. And he just, everything about that movie, you watch, and you can pick any scene that Leo's in and you're like, holy shit, that's a great, <laughs> a great job. The Revenant is almost a feature length film of just the Lambo scene. Yeah. He- <laughs> right. right. And not as thrilling in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just I, on the Revenant, I've seen it once. I never need to see it again. I, I, I'm with you on that, but Wolf of Wall Street, I can watch once a year and be cool with. Yep. You want to tell us, Tommy, a little bit about what happens in this movie for those of the people who are living under a rock? So it's it's based <laughs> on the the actual real-life story of a guy named Jordan Belfort. It just follows his life as a stockbroker. He starts off on Wall Street and 
learns the ins and outs of being a stockbroker and how to work. And he just, you can see the passion through Leo's portrayal of this character. Like the, just the idea of cold calling 500 people a day. He loves it. I don't know if you guys have ever had a job where you had to cold call people. It's awful. I hate it. But for him, that's the sound of money. And you follow him throughout the late 80s, early 90s, something like that. He had just passed the test. He got his license. And then his first day, the market crashed. And so he goes to a mom and pop stockbroker place (laughs) that's managed by Spike Jones, And he learns about what basically the rest of the movie is based on is his scheme to make billions of dollars, millions and billions of dollars off of penny stocks. So the cheap, cheap, cheap stocks where people think they're getting rich and it's really just him getting a 50% commission. And then it kind of, would you say it's a pyramid scheme? Like all the people, all the people that he hires through his company, then he doesn't have to do any of that. And he just makes all the money off of what is workers are making i'd say in a way it is but i feel like that's probably how that world works in general sadly he came up with a whole like script of what his employees should say and it was like proven he shows them how to say it and the bubbles the japanese asset bubble uh, in the 1980s 80s okay it's high brokerage fees for the trades yeah he's just hiring employees so he still but gets he's still paid. getting a percentage of it, right? And they still get paid for it. Yeah. I don't know if it's necessarily a Ponzi scheme, but okay. Yeah. But then and I the chemistry between his group, his like niche of 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 original employees that he hires. More importantly though, the chemistry with him and Jonah Hill is just phenomenal. The uh, Matthew McConaughey scenes that was on the second week of filming, but the thing he did where that thing was uh, not in the script. Leonardo really? DiCap- yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio, actually, I'm not even reading it. I just, I read this one so many times, I know it. Leonardo DiCaprio saw Matthew McConaughey doing that before his scene. And he went up to him, he was like, what are you doing? Like, why are you uh, beating your chest? And Matthew McConaughey said that's how he warms himself up before he films. And that's not just for huh. this scene, That was that's for any scene. He just, he does that to kind of, get himself going and like pump himself up kind of like similar to like when athletes do the chest bump or they're psyching themselves. He's psyching himself up and that's what he does. And so Leo was like, we got to put this on camera. We got to film this. So he told Martin Scorsese and they were like, yeah, we need to incorporate that into the scene. And then that's like pretty much the most recognizable part of that. Like when you think of Matthew McConaughey and Wolf Wall Street, And that was all in the trailer, too. That was a big selling yeah. point. In the oh, trailer. it was huge. Yeah. And it wasn't even scripted, and it was great. Nice. So yeah. Can I confess something, guys? You yeah. piece I of shit. I still haven't seen it. <gasps> oh, my Ooh. God. Red Dennis. light, green light, yellow light. Oh, green light. I got to apologize time. to Dennis because I said for people who were <laughs> living <laughs> under a rock. <laughs> And Dennis is like <laughs> right there. Whoops. I don't want to be like, I liked Revenant. I loved that movie, but I also like that man in nature kind of yeah, kind of setting. I get can, why it's not a big thing, but yeah. Can I ask why you haven't seen it yet? Is it the, the length of the movie or you just no, haven't no, gotten around to just, it? No, just haven't gotten to it. There's just a lot of movies, man. <laughs> I'll say this. I didn't see Wolf of Wall Street in theaters. It took me like a solid year after the movie came out before I ended up seeing yeah. it. Was that due to budgetary uh, reasons or just budgetary never got around? Budgetary and just couldn't get around to going in theaters. And I really wanted to because everyone was crazy. Same with uh, uh, Ready Player One. I waited like a year after that movie came out or two years almost to actually see it. Huh. Whenever, whenever Francis Ford Coppola, Martin Scorsese, Steven Spielberg, or like Brian De Palma come out with a movie, I'm there on Thursday at the first showing. <laughs> I, I still haven't watched The Irishman yet. <laughs> oh, seen my bits God. Piece. I've seen bits and pieces of it like an hour at a time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, last thing I'm going to say is what I said at the beginning. Leo deserved an Oscar. He should have gotten an Oscar for this movie. Great movie. Yeah. Green light. I'll go, nice. I'll go a step. He needed it for this because he had already yeah. been snubbed 
like seven times oh, yeah. before this movie. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And he's not an underrated actor, which is the sad no. part. He's a big guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, pick pick a movie of his. Pick a movie. And what he about uh, he, The nah, Aviator? The, dead. the Aviator. Phenomenal. He should have gotten an Oscar. Catch me that. if you can. Catch me if you can. Even better than the Aviator. Yeah. When he catch played Boner on Growing Pains. I'm telling you right now, Catch Me If You Can is Boner. probably my favorite Inception. Leo movie of all time. Inception, like, great movie. Phenomenal. Catch Me If You Can is great. Gangs in New York should have won an Oscar. Man the Basketball Iron Mask. Diaries. Oh, I didn't see that one. <laughs> Blood no, Diamond. You, Blood I didn't Diamond. Either. Come on. He I, didn't, I didn't like Blood Diamond, action. but I get it. Oh, okay. But I get I it. Know. It was all right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Django. Thriller. Django. Yeah. He cut his fucking hand and bled all over what's her name's face. I think Django is after this, though. Yeah. 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 It was. yeah. No, but it was anyway. before. It was before 2012, Wolf of Wall Street, 2013. Dennis, what did you see? All right. I'm, you know, I finally got around to seeing a movie that you requested of me to see, and that is Ooh. Frozen oh. 2. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Very excited. Let me set up for this. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 got, I, was, I was very excited going into it. Um, the, just immediately off the bat, the visuals are noticeably better. I, I love the color scheme that they go with. There's this reoccurring theme of like this purple pink fire that is this magical fire keeps consuming things uh, without going into too much detail what that is. It's, um, it's an important symbol that keeps getting addressed. So it, this one started off a little slower. You got your standard fare of music though, kind of resetting up the situation. It, clearly a little time has passed, but not a, a terrible amount. You know, the kingdom is, is all fine until plague of elemental beings start attacking the the kingdom. There are earthquakes and there's this magical fire and uh, Elsa is using her powers to try to stop this stuff. She gets the townspeople out of the kingdom, up uphill, away from all the chaos. I'm trying to remember what Anna was doing in, throughout this part of it other than just trying not to die. But, <laughs> um, you get like all of all the characters there. They start going about the business of oh, what is this stuff? We got to go find it. Elsa hears this voice singing out in the distance. There's a few flashbacks to their parents, where you start to learn a little bit more about who they really were. But this takes a long time. Oh yeah, it like, takes so long. I've seen it three times: twice in theaters, once at home. Fell asleep all three times. It's not a good sign. I, I have to repeat: the the visuals are fantastic. Mm -hmm. The songs didn't really hit it home for me as much all right so i don't have to listen to the songs this time when i watch it yeah um no you, you do because there's oh, plot. <laughs> if it's a disney movie with songs there's plot um all right all right all right <laughs> from the music guy too that's what i don't understand <laughs> um no that's but, funny because uh, these movies are exactly the same length they're both an hour and 43 minutes long. Well, so much less happens. By the time you get to, like, any sort of stakes, they're resolved. It's like, we see the problem, boom, we're tackling it, problem solved. The last act of the movie, I'm not feeling it. Like, I, or like I'm just not feeling much of anything. There's some cool moments. There's some really cool visuals. Some of the songs are, are catchy, but nothing quite has the punch of the first one. I feel like it was a cash grab and they rushed it too quick. They took a little bit more time. I feel like it could have been perfect. Yeah, Corey, you'll appreciate. There's a lot of things that feel like Skyrim. Like they borrowed a uh. lot of shit from just the same mythology. A lot of symbolism, statues. There's a group of people that we haven't seen in a very long time that are rediscovered who've been living in this forest. The storyline between the people of the kingdom and then the people of the small village Again, it just reminds me of the freaking storyline in Skyrim, but Skyrim's um, my favorite Bethesda game of all time. Yeah, there you Skyrim go. Is, many, is there, many but there's, there's no dragon in this movie, and there's no oh. King song. I'm sure. Well, there is <laughs> there is some there is some fire control in these Ooh. other these other elements are interesting. That's what's kind of cool. It, it's all building up to the source of Elsa's power and why she is who she is. So that gotcha. those kinds of moments are cool. It wasn't bad. It's so, it's uh, oh, which before uh, I don't want to give I don't want to give uh, my light my uh, red light green light quite yet. Tommy, do you have a do you have any tidbits for us? Oh, do I? Man, there's some good stuff in here. Uh, Olaf's statement that turtles can breathe out of their butts is actually a real phenomenon known as 
cloacal respiration and occurs with several species, including painted box turtles, eastern snapping turtles, and Fitzroy <coughs> River turtles. That's funny. Funny fact, actually, I breathe out of my ass clo- too. Cloacal? Cloacal. Uh, after he said that, I would genuinely had a thought to myself, like, I wonder if that's true. I feel like it probably is because it's a Disney movie. And apparently in the beginning when <laughs> young Anna and Elsa are playing with snow figurines, there's a figure resembling Baymax from Big Hero 6. Um, yes. There's one resembling... I uh, probably mispronouncing because I've never seen the movie Totoro from My Neighbor Totoro. Totoro. And there's uh, Totoro. <laughs> there's an elephant that looks like Dumbo, and then there's a Snow White figure. Oh, uh, at the song used to call uh, Elsa to the Enchanted Forest is a type of Scandinavian herding call that's called Kulning. K U L N. Oh, see, that's going to lead me to a question though, because it was briefly used in the score of the first movie. Oh, the beginning part that they never yeah. reused. They probably, right. probably were like, "Oh, we got called out on that. We should use it again." <laughs> um, my biggest fear with Frozen Two, I haven't seen it still, going into this thing, is that they would just use it as a means to give um, Anna powers so they could oh. sell Anna mm-hmm. toys. They didn't well, do okay. that. Did they? Do you, Do you honestly do you honestly want the answer right now? Spoilers. I do. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry about that. It's okay. Anna's story. She's still my favorite character. I will say, I'm all. I am still team Anna all the way. She's the fact that she's keeping up with her fucking super powered sister. Which okay, can we talk about that for a second? The soup. The powers that she has are insane. She is a god. She can make perfectly sculpted ice into any shape she wants, and choose to not let it ever freeze. She's a god. Yeah. <laughs> she but, runs through the ocean, man. She fucking takes on mighty waves. Oh, and, and her she gets, dress she gets is even made more of, powers of snow. Oh yeah, and if you think about it, and she can she can build complex structures in the matter of moments. She's a god. What's oh, the sorry. light? It's a yellow. Frozen 1, that that's the one to hype. Frozen 2, if you want to savor the flavor, go ahead and watch the second one. You're not even getting more of the same. You're, you're just getting like a slightly watered down version of the first one you know more or less you're team anna i'm team olaf all the way oh well i guess we start including everyone else then i'm sven but oh <laughs> the reindeer okay. are the awesome reindeer, yeah. oh and Corey, i will say your your favorite shopkeeper makes another appearance and <laughs> oh excellent <laughs> Boo-hoo. Boo-hoo. <laughs> um, cool maybe i'll watch it just for that i'll watch i'm it. gonna move on to the movie that i saw this week yeah please what? yeah Unless you have something else to say about Frozen. Nah. Have at it, you. It's all you. All righty, fellas. I saw Jerry Maguire. Anyone see what? this? What? Oh, oh, yeah. I haven't seen it I in actually a long time, haven't. But I saw it. Okay, so Jerry Maguire's the movie where Show Me the Money, that famous line is from, and uh, oh, you had me money. at Hello. Yeah, and you had me at Hello. Those are the two yeah. famous lines from this movie. Tom Cruise, Renee Zellweger in it. Jonathan Lipnicki. Yeah, that's relevant. Tom Cruise is <laughs> It's oh, pretty Cuba, relevant. Cuba Gooding Jr. is in it. I think it's more important that Bonnie Hunt's in it from Jumanji, the original oh, Jumanji. Oh, yeah. Johnson Jumanji. He's just an agent for sports figures, and he's an asshole. Then he gets a conscience. This is Tom Cruise. And then Renee Zellweger likes that he grew a conscience. It really speaks to her. And then they fall in love <laughs> throughout the movie, and Tom Cruise needs to rebuild his agency career with the sports and the only person who will still let him represent him is Cuba Gooding Jr. Hmm. It's a good movie. I don't know. Uh, as I watched it, when I watched it in the 90s, I was like, whoa, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but I same. watched it in 2020. Some parts of it are a little strange, but it's good. It's still very, very good. I was going to say just the other, the landscape of things at the time, there was a lot of other movies around i felt like it stood out in that it wasn't you know the other shit that was available at the time now i can't think of anything but (laughs) well the fact that it's a love story is interesting it appeals to a wide array of audiences because there's a lot going on in this movie having to do with like love and money and sports and shit Mm -hmm. but i don't know i just found that their relationship is a little bit more like i don't know I, there's Cuba Gooding Jr. uses a line in the movie like stealing the pooty or something, which is like I don't remember. <laughs> but it's when you use a single mom's kid to sleep with the mom. And I felt like, yeah, Tom Cruise is being a little weird. He's like 10 years older than this chick, and she has a kid already, and he's best friends with the kid. And, and but he, you don't have a young friend 
who's the age of 10 or less? No, I don't. Do oh. you? <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's not, not 10 anymore. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it was just, um, it's still a great movie. If you've never seen it, you should go watch it. It's funny. It's interesting. There's iconic lines in it. Yeah. My favorite line is when they're having a hard time getting a deal from the Arizona Cardinals for Cuba Gooding Jr. They bring him a deal and Tom Cruise says, I'll go back to the Cardinals with this and get a request. And Cuba Gooding Jr.'s wife says, what, are you going to request they remove their dicks from our assholes? Whoa. That, <laughs> that should be up there with, with you know, show me the you money. Had me and you had me at hello. Because <laughs> it's a great line. So, yeah, it's a great movie. If you haven't ever seen it before, go see it. If you've seen it but not in a long time, go see it. If you saw it last week, probably too soon. Probably too soon. And uh, and enjoy. Tom, you got any trivia, though, for this? I do have trivia. You were talking about Bonnie Hunt was in the movie. The toughest part for her was playing a character that doesn't like Tom Cruise. (laughs) (laughs) That was the toughest part for her. Um, But the story reportedly is based on a real life orange county agent called lee steinberg and he makes a cameo in the movie as troy aikman's agent (laughs) which he actually was in real life steinberg's ex-partner david dunn tried to lure many of steinberg's clients away just as jay moore's bob sugar does in this i love jay moore there you go and then oh former this one's cool former nfl defensive back tim mcdonald is credited to have come up with the phrase show me the money while he was a member of the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. I want to be like, did you know that? Now you know. Thanks for that info, Tommy. Everybody, you have a fantastic night. I was here with Tommy, Adam, and Dennis, and this has been the Movie Toast Reviews podcast. Yeah, stay toasty. Once again, thanks for listening, everybody. Please hit us up on Instagram and Twitter, both at movie underscore toast. Let us know what we got right and what we got wrong. Maybe we'll read it on air next week. Who knows? I want TikTok and Pornhub too. See you guys over there. Oh, I'll see you there. Premium. Oh, uh, Premium's now free. Night. <laughs> <laughs>